Hello! Welcome to Friday Night Magic at Heroes Welcome, playing some modern. Uh, we got Julian Curtis playing Hollow One. Uh, he just got turn two, four Hollow Ones into play. <clears throat> <laughs> Glad we were able to tune in right on that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure... Oh my goodness. He, uh, I think he played a... Uh, played the Goblin Lore... And he cycled a Street Wraith and got all four of his Hollow Ones out. Turn one. So that's the Hollow One deck. <laughs> uh, versus Peter Wilden playing Scape Shift, which we're going to go to game two pretty soon. <laughs> okay, and it's um, me, Gary, and Brent Stearns hosting tonight. Right, uh, I forgot my names because I was just too excited about <laughs> the, the uh, four Hollow Ones on turn two. <laughs> pretty good it's pretty good i did i casually played this uh deck quite a few months ago and uh i was able to get in a casual game i was able to get four hollow ones on turn one doesn't happen that often but uh it, it does happen well, he, peter's trying <laughs> he played a uh he he played that uh, that elf. <laughs> As you know, I'm good with names, but to destroy an artifact or creature, or sorry, an artifact or enchantment, and Hollow One oh, is an think, artifact. Can't think of what it's called. Yeah, I keep thinking of the Knight of Autumn now, <laughs> Reclamation Sh Sage. There you go. And it fell out of favor, but uh, it's still good in the green red scape shift deck. Okay. Since they're not going to really splash white just for that card. See, so yeah, he's going to block four, take ten. Go down to ten. I've actually never seen the Hollow One deck. You've seen it before. Have I? I'm pretty sure you have, Gary. You just don't know things. That's true. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. I come back with excitement because that was actually kind of cool. That was, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, Julian with the uh, basically turn two win. <laughs> and we're going to sideboards already. I think that was pretty exciting that we were able to get that on. Right, right, on, right yeah. when we turned it on, right on camera. It's good times. Yes. Okay, so what does Scape Shift have against this deck? Really not too much. Uh, they have a lot of, like, three mana burn, like uh, Anger of the Gods. Uh, you might bring in some Graft Digger's Cage, because then the, uh, the Phoenixes and uh, the Blood Gas can't come back. Okay. Um... A good strategy is I see he has the, uh, I don't know if you put it in, he has um, Revlum Reveler in his deck, in his sideboard. What is that one? That one's a, uh, well, let's look it up. Unfortunately, I don't know how to spell it. Be Bevlum, Bev? Look. V? Belvimer. So, <laughs> professionals here. Belvimer Revlar is a 2-2 two, two green for a 4-4. Four, four. Okay. Comes to play, you gain 4 life. Uh, but if an opponent has you discard it, it comes into play. It comes into play. Gotcha. And so, uh, the Hollow One deck plays the Burning Inquiry. Each player draws 3 cards and discards 3 cards at random. Okay. So... You know, it's not as good as four hollow ones, but if he can get one or two Bevlam Revelers... Not Bevlam Reveler, I'm sorry, I'm naming the wrong card. Uh, Buying something, isn't it? It's Behemoth. Bevlam Reveler is a red card. Holy smokes. Um,
Sorry about that, folks. Obstinate Payloth. Now we can look it up because we are geniuses around here. Oh, Google. Oh, Google. What would we do without you? <laughs> <laughs> A random name. Oh, there it is. Boom. Right, so there we go. Jeez. Uh, yeah, so if uh, Julian Curtis plays that turn one burning inquiry and Peter is able to discard it, yeah, he'll happily play it and then pretty sure he'd be happily, happy to trade it with any hollow ones that Curtis is able to play round one or turn one. Alright, so game two. Two. Let's see if uh, Julie can get off the miracle turn two thousand guys again, or if uh, Peter can actually do his game plan. See, so he has a Val. Looks like at least one Valakut in hand. What is on Peter's shirt? <laughs> I honestly can't tell. <laughs> um. I don't know. Hmm. Well, if you guys in chat know what it is. <laughs> yeah, if you're you're in chat, uh, come talk to us. Let us know card names like Obstin Bailoth. Like Julian looks like he just played Tapland Go. Peter played Tapland Go. Taplan Go. <laughs> Uh, Peter with a uh, secure a tribe elder. And Julian's gonna play the f not a flame wig adept, but uh, flame blade adept. Peter's Farsi. gonna play Farsi can say go. Not quite as exciting <laughs> game as it was. The first game, but taking it slow. Looks like Julian kept a one land hand. No, that's right. And uh, Peter's up to four, basically five with the uh, secured tri builder. Yeah. He you know, all he needs is seven lands, and if he has the escape shift in hand, uh, then he just uh, he pretty much just wins. See a couple lands. I see a uh, prime primeval titan in his hand, so pretty sure this game is going to be over pretty soon. Gotta love that Valkut. Julian did draw a Faithless Looting, so I believe he'll probably just play that. Oh, he's gonna go with the Burning Inquiry. Okay, he must have drawn that. Uh, it's great as the Flame, uh, flame Blade Adept uh, gets powered up now uh, with after discarding cards. It's one of the best <laughs> one drops in, in this deck. It, it's such a small creature, but it is very scary with all the discard effects in your, in your deck. Flame blade. Oh, whatever you did. Okay. Yeah, I see that. So, yeah, whenever you discard a card or cycle, he gets plus one. It's a jackal. It is a jackal. What's great, he has menace, too, so even the secure tribal dirt can't block it. And so. Peter's going to be at least taking four. Looks like he drew, or he discarded two Primeval Titans and something else. Looks like it kind of helped out Julian to have him discard all those <laughs> big Titans. Yeah, it's a little rough. Julian did draw land, and now he's going to play Faithless Looting, discarding two more cards. <laughs> Pretty soon he's going to be taking at least six damage now. Well, Peter does have... Two anger of the gods in hand though, so he's gonna clean up the board his next turn. Yep. He's just explaining that he discarded three cards and two more. Plus the creature is a one two itself, so he's attacking for six in total. And, and he has a hollow one. one. <laughs> I'm interested to see if Peter's gonna wanna double anger this next turn. Just to get rid of that uh, 
uh, hollow one. Anger removes it, right? Anger would exile. It only does three damage, though. Okay. And hollow one is a four four. Gotcha. So if he chooses to do this play, um, oh, okay, there we go. And say you fetched the wrong land, but you good thing they got it. Windswept Teeth cannot search up Basic Mountain. So he's not... He's not sacrificing the Secure Tribe Elders, so I don't believe he can double anger this turn then. Ooh, what a draw, though. And now he's regretting... Not no, sacking no. the uh, secure tribe old because the mm -hmm. land comes into play tapped, oh, and uh, he drew his third primeval tide, and now he can't cast it. Which he should have just cast. He should have just sacked it anyways if he's planning to play this uh, uh, anger of the gods anyways, because he's going to sack it before anger goes mm -hmm. on like he's doing now. So, yeah. oh well, misplays. Yeah, it happens. Watch my videos; it happens all the time. <laughs> And this is why I'm in here and not out there. As the old saying goes, those who can't those who can't learn teach. Those who can't play commentate. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, he got rid of the jackal. Yep. <laughs> it's a jackal, Peter. It's a jackal, Peter. <laughs> it's a jackal. It's a jackal. So Brent, how do you think Return to Ravnica has infected this format? Um, really hasn't done much. I, I was going to say, I'm <laughs> at least cheap, creeping chill. Yeah, we saw we saw <laughs> creeping chill. I was, I was thinking about that, that earlier a, today. That was game fun. changer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, really haven't seen any. Oh, he drew a thought seize to get rid of the oh, third primeval titan. Oh, oh wow. It's rough. Julian has just just been drawing gas. Oh yeah, I haven't actually I've seen I haven't seen much Assassin's trophies yet. I uh, haven't really seen haven't really seen much any of the new cards besides the the creeping chill. Creeping chill. But I'm pretty sure, you know, the set just came out and maybe people haven't bought them yet. They're still, you know, like especially Assassin's trophies are still like twenty twenty five dollars a piece, and you know you really don't want to pay that much for yeah. cards. You already have a, you know, expensive deck, and then you have to buy more cards for it and. It's fair. It's fair. And like either neither of these two decks are really I don't think uh benefited from Return to Ravnica. Well Peter played a Valakut and he has five land. Five oh. five mountains. Mm -hmm. So any mount he plays from now on. Ooh. Scott's is that a s I think that's a scape shift. Yeah. I think okay. he just drew a scape shift, yeah. So, yep, he's gonna. Okay, well, yeah, that was a scape shift. I think that's the uh, new art scape shift. Didn't recognize it at first, but. Okay. Looks like Curtis was. Up. Curtis had some good top decks, but Peter just had the winning top deck. <laughs> okay, one to one. See the new art? Yeah, that was definitely the new art scape shift. Well, <laughs> half loaded new art scape shift. <laughs> anywho, we just want to look at the art, anyways. It's kind of the namesake deck. Uh, it says so. The way scape shift works is um, is you search your or your uh, sacrifice any of our lands, uh, then search for your library for up to that many lands, and they come into play. Well, the rest of it says come into play tapped, uh, then shuffle your library. But the way that Escape Shift works is you want, you basically just want seven lands in play. Mm -hmm. uh, you sacrifice all seven of them. You search for Valakut, the something something. Something in the mountain. I think it's U, V, v U L. I could be wrong though. I think. I think this thing is, I believe our uh, 
Yeah, it's just, it's loading. Okay. Just push back. It should load. Go back there. There we go. There we go. Valkut, the Molten Pinnacle. There we go. Boom. So, right, he, uh... So Peter wants to search for Valkut, the Molten Pinnacle, and then six mountains. And so now, since they all come into play at the same time, they all trigger, all six of them doing three damage, uh, then doing 18 damage to your opponent. So it's not 20, but in modern, you got fetch lands, you got shock lands, uh, Julian's playing thought seizes, and, right, and uh, street race. So your opponent it very rarely is not at 20 life when you yeah. have the seven lands out to play this. So, yeah, he plays the Far Seeks, the Secure Tribe Elder Search for Tomorrow. Just, uh, you want to get your lands out as quickly as possible, and you just uh, Valakut as soon as you can, or Scape Shift, rather, as soon as you can. The thing uh, is, if your opponent is at 20 life, you just wait till you have 8 lands, search for 2 Valakuts, and then 6 lands, then it does 36 damage to your opponent. So, again, that's pretty much just game over then. Yeah, it's, uh, it's quite the thing. And also, playing Valakut that few couple of times I've noticed <laughs> just playing the Valkut is pretty good. Right, yeah, <laughs> Just exactly. having it on the board is uh, intimidating and I think it does damage. That game too, I think Peter kind of, I mean, besides just winning by drawing the Valkut, I think, or by drawing the Scape Shift, I think by playing the Valkut, he was still in a good, situation, a good lead because yeah. every, like I said, every single mountain is a three damage, every far seek is three damage, a secure tribe builder is three damage. Mm -hmm. He probably plays like two fours in there. Yeah, exactly. If he Maybe. plays two forests. Yeah, yeah. They usually, yeah, they play run upwards of one or two forests, but everything else in the deck is mountain. Yeah. So Julian has the first turn uh, Burning Inquiry again. <laughs> we play the random discard game. Discarding Search for Tomorrow, a couple lands. Julian discarded a Cathartic Reunion and some other cards. Can't really tell, but don't think any of them were Hollow Ones. Another Burning Inquiry. I don't I think Julian kept either kept a one-lander again or discarded all of his lands. So I don't see a second land in hand. But he does have another Burning think, Inquiry. I think he does have one more. Oh, he does? Okay. I'm pretty sure. I think I saw one in there. Uh, Peter with the Stomping Ground says go. Well, yep. If he, well, he, <laughs> he just, drew, he just, just drew, drew it, but he did, <laughs> yeah, he he did. did have the second. <laughs> okay, he did have the second land anyways. He searches up a mountain. Pretty promo mountain. Oh, and then turn to, uh... oh man, Tassiger the Golden Fang. What? <laughs> Tassiger the Golden Fang. I've never even heard of this card. Yeah, you've heard of it. You say that. <laughs> <laughs> delve. See, I don't know that many delve, car delve cards, though. I don't play Black all them. Oh, I do. So know he card. plays the deck generally. <laughs> see, I, see, I told you. The Jack generally plays uh, one Tasker and three uh, Gurmag Anglers. And uh, it plays the one tasker, even though it has one less power, it has also one less casting cost. Mm -hmm. So it's easier to play on turn two than a lot of times than the um, than the angler is. So he cast that first so he doesn't have to discard it to the uh, second burning inquiry. And now they're uh, playing burning inquiry. So he discarded. Great side game. Oh. <laughs> Peter loses Dude. another. Primeval Titan. Julian looks like he discarded a Bloodgast. Julian's on the hunt for those things. Man. Hollow one. Yeah, like, yep. And Peter just draws another land. I think he just has lands and uh, like far seeks in hand. Or far, far seek effects. At least that one kind of gains you life.
I think they're discussing how Peter's turn two is a little bit more boring than Julian's <laughs> turn two was. It's not the the tribe turn two. <laughs> Peter with a 1-1 one, one on turn two. Julian Curtis with uh, eight powers worth of creature on turn two. He's going to play Faithless Looting. Scar's Cathartic Reunion, and I was thinking about the Flame Blade Adept, but it's going to discard the Phoenix, which I think is a better play, because now uh, mm -hmm. he can cast it from the graveyard for a single red, and now attack for 10. And Peter will block Sack. He'll take 6 in total, but there's still 10 power worth of creatures on the board, mm -hmm. and... What's Even the... if he draws an anger, it, all it does is get rid of the phoenix, but still leaves eight power worth of creatures on the board. It's not looking too good for Peter. Discarded a lightning bolt too, so he can't. Well, uh, that's w one of the ways that if he had like an anger plus a bolt, at least he can get rid of the other creatures. But just looking at his hand, I think he's just trying to get that Val out with just yeah. enough mountains to you know do something. <laughs> he drew another secure tribe out elder as a blocker, but yeah, his hand is. All lands, it looks like. Oh, he's gonna play. Does he have two? Is the far seek? Yeah, oh, far seek. Okay. But yeah, now he has four lands in hand, which is pretty good in the Valkut deck. I mean, yep. he has all mountains and I think two Valkuts, but with this much power on the board, I don't think he's gonna live that long for it to matter. No, he has one turn. He has a couple turns. He has a blocker this turn. Okay, even a blocker this turn, and I think he's just dead next turn, though. Yep. I don't even know if he can draw to get himself out of this. I, I really don't know. Well, he'll have six lands next turn. So he can draw Primeval Titan. Mm -hmm. Primeval Titan can look up for a value. When it comes to play, can get a Valkud and a Mountain. Hits the... Hits the bird. Phoenix, and then well, the Phoenix like... just comes back, though. That's the problem. Oh, well, he's gonna, yep. Bolt the tire. Bolt the Steve. Yep. <laughs> yeah. With that, I don't think they're. I think Julian's probably at a zero hour. Guess he could draw a Bayloth that'll gain him a life and can block. And that's just kind of uh, extending the inedi inedible. Inedible. In inedible. Inedible. We don't know how to say the word, so... Moving on. <laughs> yep. We got 10 damage swinging. You'll be at 4. I suppose he could have drawn a scape shift this turn, too. I mean, he, he does escape. have 7 land. <laughs> so if he would have drawn the scape shift, it would have been game over. But I do not... I believe he drew an explore. So he does have another draw to draw exactly scape shift this turn. He's He's hoping. He's like, if this is a scape shift, yep. I got this. <laughs> yep. Heart of the Come card. On. What is it? Name oh! Oh! What? <laughs> Heart of the card. Wow. Woo. What? What a win. No way. <laughs> I think Peter's a little happy about that uh, top deck. Yep, there we go. Well, let's, let's talk about this. First game, we saw four hollow ones. And turn two, yep. Uh, second game happened. Third game, we got a scape shift. <laughs> Third game, well, it was the scape shift. That was his, that was like I was saying, that was uh, his only out was that scape shift. shift. That's crazy. That was a, that was a good game. That was some, that was, <laughs> those, those were all good games. Yes. Holy yes. smokes. That, that was, was fun a, to watch. Whew. Glad we got that on camera. Glad, glad we could watch that <laughs> first, first hand. That was fun. That was enjoyable that you called it, too. <laughs> like, right before. Right before, yep. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. And he draw, doesn't even draw it. He draws the cantrip. It has four <laughs> lands untapped. There's nothing else in the deck that would help except for that scape ship. That was, that was pretty good. Good, good on you. Good on you, Peter. Good, good <laughs> games, guys. Well, I think uh, I don't know if we have enough time to look for a second game, second match this round. No, no, I don't think so. So we'll be back for round number two 
at Heroes Welcome in Menominee, Wisconsin. Uh, yeah, we'll be back.
welcome back to round number two of Menominee Wisconsin Heroes Welcome <laughs> Friday Night Magic. You know, all those things. You weren't wrong. Um, <laughs> we have Noah Miller playing humans versus young Nicholas Kaiser playing a blue white control. I know blue white control is his. He, he plays other decks, but blue white control, is, I know, is Nick's uh, kind of pet deck, I guess. Signature. Signature deck, yeah. I know I've seen Mil Noah Miller on camera, but I don't think I don't know if he's played humans. I actually am not sure what he played. Have yeah. we had humans on camera? Not, not usually. Um, I know there's a couple seen... Noah human players. I don't think I've actually ever seen a human deck. Well, now, I think we've had it on here before, but it's a it's a humans is one of the better decks in the format. But blue white. I'm if he's playing. I don't know if, if Nick's playing the miracle version, which he probably is. Uh, it's really good against the human deck. Uh, have a one mana wrath effect against all you, all those pesky humans. It's an Avacyn's Pilgrim. Tap, tap for white. Taps for white. Yep. Uh -huh. green, tap, <laughs> tap for white, and it's a human. So some of us play that as kind of like noble hierarch five, five to eight. Okay. So what are the... And he plays a turn to a Mantis Rider. Who has the advantage in this game, Brent? Well, if Noah Miller just keeps playing Haymakers like that, then it's Noah. But if Nick can get to the mid-game, uh, it's it definitely really depends. If Noah, like I said, can go out and gate fast, it's really in Noah's hand. But Nick just needs, uh, you know, if he has a couple paths and, Ooh, you know, is... top deck Supreme Verdicts. Uh, that is a meddling mage. Meddling mage. And he's going to logic knot it. Ooh. And oh wow. What is that one? That was a path to exile. Oh. Man, all this promo art is throwing me off here. Which I thought he was going to. I think I think he was gonna I think he Not 100% sure what happened because I thought he logic knot it. No, okay. He was he was going to logic knot it, but then he just decided to path the uh, rider instead. So yeah. now Noah probably will just name logic knot. Logic knot, yeah. He plays cryptic command, doesn't he? He Most. does play cryptic, yeah. I hate that card. <laughs> I, I'm not a fan of control. I it's... love me some blue white control yes. decks. Yes. yes, you do. Has another path in hand. <clears throat> you should pull up that meddling mage because I'm actually interested in that art. You want to see that art, meddling mage? Yes, I do. Do like me some meddling. Meddling kids. It was an unsta unstable. It was an unstable card. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's a much better. Oh, yeah, I like the Alara. Alara Reborn one was really cool looking. I think I think the one he played is a promo one, but I'm not sure which promo it is. Still a pretty card right there. So, yes, it's a very pretty card. Um, oh, actually, the original that. art <laughs> the original art is uh, Chris Bakula. I know that, that actually. <laughs> I actually know that. There's a few cards that actually have, like, pro players in them? Yeah, well, they were, like, world winners, I think. Something okay. like that. Wasn't and the, then they could... The first one was Tim, wasn't it? Uh, Prophecy, Specter, Sorcerer, oh or whatever. Taps, taps, taps to do one damage. damage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
something, yes. I know what you're talking about. I don't know. <laughs> so I think Noah played a new human from uh, Guilds, but I'm not exactly sure. Or from Guild, uh, from Return to Ravnica, or Guilds of Ravnica is the new set. Um, but I'm not sure what it is. We haven't been saying Return, have we? Yes, we have. Because uh, we're geniuses, yeah. So he's going to play a Thalia and a... Oh, that's a... Uh, he's going to look at that. That's a uh, Mayor of Averbrook. <laughs> All the names of the humans. <laughs> I think that's a mayor. Maybe not. No. I know that list, humans list used to run it a long, long, long time ago. It kind of fell out of favor. Um, you know, I'm actually not sure what that card is. I apologize. It looks like it's a new one. Yeah. Could it be the um, box promo from the new set? Oh, he had the, had the <laughs> terminus on top with the Jace. Oh, do you know what promo that is? I know it has Convoke. I know it has Convoke. <laughs> and it can't be countered. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. I don't know if he. I don't know if he tapped any creatures though to play it. <laughs> no plays a Reflector Mage on Empty Board, followed by a second Terminus by Nick Kaiser. It's crazy. See, this is where I said now Nick's down to five, but I'm pretty sure this is kind of his game to win now. Yeah. <sighs> Nothing worse than seeing untapped land on a control deck. Yep. His Field of Ruin to get rid of the uh, Cavern of Souls, because he still has that Logic Knot in hand, so... That makes sense. <clears throat> Every day they're all shuffling. I really like Noah's play mat. Yeah, that was uh, the well, regional championship uh, play mat from uh, Star City Games. Oh. It's definitely a Sierra Angel in the middle, right? Well, it's actually, it's a, a <laughs> I don't know what it is, because it's, it acts, it's actually original art. Oh, really? Uh, Star City has a, I don't know if they have a, an artist, well, they have an artist that does a lot of their art form. You, you've seen, like, their little their chromo creature, creature stuff creature like that. Stuff, yep. Yeah, they, and then, oh, actually, this, oh, that actually, might be wrong, that's, um, oh, I can't think of her name. I think it's original art, but it's not the one, the person I was thinking of. Oh, shoot. Well, what is that card? Uh, Ancestral Visions. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So, yeah. You get to the point where your player, your, your control player is playing a four mana suspend. He's think, he's pretty much thinking, knowing he's going to live for that four turns. <laughs> Ooh. Noah's on the <clears throat> Exalted Beatdown plan. He played Noble Hierarch, followed by a Phantasmal Image, copying Noble Hierarch, so now he has two zero ones with Exalted. That tap for mana. It's wonderful. Yep. Now, if Nick wants to, the uh, zero or the minus one ability on Jace says to return a creature to its owner's hand. Um, whenever a Phantasmal Image creature gets targeted, gets, gets targeted, either you have to sacrifice it. So, right now, Nick could just. Pretty much use Jace as a Doom Blade. Mm -hmm. Though it's not really a big threat, I don't know if he will, but it is an option he has. I mean, he is at four. That's two swings. That is two swings, you're absolutely right. Two swings. Nick does have a Colonnade in play, though, so he has a blocker. Yep, he's gonna use the <laughs> use the Doom Blade ability and play it to fairy. Oh, uh, this game. I think I didn't I say it last week where yeah. it's the kind of their Tron. They have, um, they have the Teferi, they have the Jace. Untapped two lands. Untapped two lands. <laughs> yep. Yep. Nick just assembled Tron, and yeah, this is cryptic commands. Yep. Yeah, he do, I think he does have a cryptic command in hand. Of course he does. It's a control deck. 
tries to sneak in a creature, but uh, Nick Kaiser says cryptic command. <laughs> I don't even think Nick drew his card, but it doesn't really matter at this point. Drew a mana leak. Pretty good against the player with two, three lands in play. Mm -hmm. Alright, Noah's had on, enough. Yep. Noah's had enough. He, he knows the writing's on the wall. Game two. So what does human have against control? The sideboard here. Ooh, good question. Fortunately, we don't ha have deck list, so uh, we'll try to see what he has. What uh, would you put in your sideboard? Well, I did see a Gaddock Teague, which is really good. It stops the Terminus. It stops a Cryptic Command. stops a Supreme Verdicts. I saw one in John's case. It's like Grand Arbiter or something. I don't know if that's what it is. Grand Arbiter August in the 4th? No. <laughs> funny. No, it's not that one. I thought you were kidding, but no. <laughs> <laughs> the four threw me up. Um, um, Gaddock Teague? No, I think it's a knight too. It's a human knight. It costs two white. It says they can't play spells on your turn. Or activate abilities. Hmm. I'm not too sure. I will look this up, because I'm actually curious. You look this up, Gary. I will. And I will sit here and... Watch them sideboard. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, Nick has a really good game one against humans, so I don't know if he really has that many cards he wants to take out. You know what you should tell them about, Brent? What's that? The thing happening oh, tomorrow. So, you're off. Anybody's watching tomorrow in Heroes Welcome, Menominee, Wisconsin, we will be having a standard PBTQ. Uh, registration's at 12. It starts at 1 uh, with a minimum uh, prize payouts of $500. Uh, more if more people show up and uh, myself and uh, Robert Brostrom will be commentating we'll do some live stream and we'll be streaming commentating some uh, some standards so if you want to come play that'd be great if you can't come play and you, you still watch on twitch head twitch.tv slash uh, heroes welcome and uh, we'd love to have you come play or have you come watch either way it should be a good time Unfortunately, Gary won't be here because he is a scrub. I actually might come back, come in. He will be here, maybe. Possibility. <laughs> but I will be here, and uh, Bob That's will be curious. here. Gary's looking up for some imaginary cards. It's not imaginary. <laughs> it exists. Ah, what is it? <laughs> I see it every time. I'm like, man, this would be a really good card in humans, even though I never see it on a human deck, so. But it was really cool. Hmm. Yeah. Cutting of decks. I believe Noel will be on the play. Gary couldn't find his imaginary card. It's not imaginary. Noah looked like he had zero land, so that is a mulligan. I believe. I didn't really see what Nick had, but he had the terminus on top, but he's going to mulligan anyways. Find this card. Grand Abolisher. Boom. <laughs> Found it. The cleric it wasn't a knight. I lied. I'm sorry. Well, that's what threw me off. Yeah. I bet you've never heard of this card. I have heard of it. I feel like this would be a good sideboard card. During your turn, your opponents can't cast spells or activate abilities from champions 
artifacts, artifacts, creatures, and enchantments. It is a human. <laughs> they can't do anything on your turn. But, I mean, Nick says, okay, I'll path your guy during my turn, and now I'll opt in turn miss on your turn. Fair. Fair. I still feel like it's, it stalls, at least a little. It, it might stall it, a little it gives bit, a target. but... I'm not sure. I think there's a reason why it's not I have played. not seen a human's deck play it. It is a human, though. You're absolutely correct. Is there a reason they all have to be humans? I, so, there are a bunch of the lands, like the Cabin of Souls, okay. names human, so you can use it for any color. Oh, okay. Um, then there's the, I forgot what it's called, but it's the new Cabin of Souls, where they can, it doesn't have the uncountable cause, but it has the same thing where you name a creature type. Plus, then you play uh, Thalia's Lieutenant, that, well, you play uh Thanos' lieutenant. Thanos. No, I can't even think of her name. Thalia, jeez. So when it enters play, put a 1 1 human counter on each human you control. But whenever and whenever human comes to play, put a 1 1 counter on Thalia. Okay. So you want everything in your deck to be human so they can synergize with that, with that and the lands. Oh, oh boy. Noah kept a one lander. Nick's already had four lands and, and played Jace. a Jace and is going upstairs saying, Do you have a land on top? No, you can draw it. Noah has to discard. Oh boy. He's going to look. Saw was a land. <laughs> says, Nah, you can draw something else. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Nick, for showing us that you will not be giving him an island. Could this card go? Oh, Nick is having too much fun. Come on. Reveals. Oh, another Wasn't one. a land, so yeah, we'll keep that one on top. All right. Go. <laughs> Draw. Oh, look, a non-land. Oh, it, it was a thing you can play. I think it's and cryptic commands. Command. Oh, jeez. Oh. <laughs> rough. This is rough. This is rough, yes. Uh, oh, let's see what you got now. Uh, yeah, you can have that. I think it was an Absence Pilgrim. I'm like, oh, I suppose, but we're going to counter that one. Cryptic Command. <laughs> the only time in History of Magic that an Absence Pilgrim has been Cryptic Commanded. Oh, let's go upstairs see what you got. Oh, yeah, you can have that one. I'll play my land for the turn. Say go. Oh, I'm going to discard the Thalia. Say go. I'm going to look at your top card. Oh, I believe he... <laughs> I believe he just ultimated Jace. And Noah said, okay. <laughs> so, ult the Jace ultimate. <laughs> well, Jace ultimate wins you the game, but basically exiles his library, then shuffles his hand into his library. With no land. And so, yeah. yeah. He has one land, and this is his entire hand. Uh, okay. Rough. Well, Nick just kind of... That was an easy game for him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when your opponent only has one land and doesn't draw a second land... Until you can play your Jace and yep. them never drawing a land. That's all that, she wrote. That's kind of all she wrote, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's all she wrote. See, I just, I don't like draw. <laughs> I, I'm always on the receiving end. Well, don't, I hate playing don't, it. Don't keep a one-lander then. I, oh, yeah, I, you know, let's talk about the no, story. No, we don't have to talk about any <laughs> stories. Uh, so... <laughs> Maybe see if we can get another round on. Sounds good. Another game on. We'll see. Sounds if not, good. we'll be back for round number three. Uh, so keep it real, friends. Keep it real. Welcome back. Uh, no one, no one, Nick really wanted to play another game because that wasn't. No so, one rematch. Yeah. Nick, Nick won the game, won the round, but they both wanted to play another game, so we said go for it. Because <laughs> that that second game 
wasn't really a game. It was just... Solitaire. It was, it was <laughs> pretty much solitaire. You're absolutely right. <laughs> has, has, has white, blue... Yes, white, blue. Not blue, white. Mm -hmm. Has white, blue control changed at all, ever? It's always this... I feel like it's always kind of the staple thing. It's, let's counter everything. Well, and, that's what white, blue, white does is... Plays path to exiles and plays counter spells. Um, you know, a few months ago, Jace the un, uh, Jace the Mind Sculptor got unbanned, and people thought that control was just going to be out of this world. Mm -hmm. Now we see Jace is really good, but it doesn't. It's not the end all be all like a lot of people are expecting. But it is really good. The versions never used to play the uh, Terminus. But now with Jace with the Brainstorm ability mm -hmm. takes Terminus a lot better. And having a one-mana Wrath is definitely a lot better than having yeah. you know, four-mana Wraths. Yes. Yes, Especially true. in the format with like Noah's deck playing all these creatures. and can You probably could be dead by turn four, while well, at least with Terminus, even if you miracle it you know, without setting up your library, it's still a good, good top deck against a lot of decks. Oh. They mul both mulligan to six. Nick put on the bottom. Noah on the top. Noah hopefully he has more than one land this time. <laughs> oh. So I kept a felony on top, so he must have a second land. There we go. How many lands do you usually keep in your hand? Uh, well, it depends on the deck. Like Noah's Noah's deck, you can generally run on two or three lands. Okay. So you don't want to keep like a four or five lander. While like Nick's deck, you want to try to make your land drop every turn. Mm -hmm. So keeping a five land hand is not ideal. I think four is kind of the ideal. Yeah, ideal. Um, but you know, even like five, maybe six, depending on what your seventh card is, uh, is generally pretty good. Okay. with an island and says go. Athalia is really good against the control decks because having everything cost one more mana uh, is really painful now that like there's no way he could counter this meddling mage so he has to pretty much use his path on the on the Thalia before meddling mage names path to exile. Yep. Oh, I didn't see what he drew. Oh, he drew... T okay. He drew a terminus and I believe... He chose not to cast it. It's very awkward because when he puts it up on camera, it puts it up on Noah's <laughs> side. <laughs> That's okay though. I like uh, I like when players try to show us what's going on. It makes makes this job a little bit easier. Noah has a. Uh, Sin Sin Collector in hand. I think that's a promo art Sin Collector. Mm -hmm. Or maybe new art. It's some art different than the original one. Modern art. Modern art. <laughs> now he's going to Path to Exile, the uh, Melee Mage. Noah's definitely not hurting for lands this game. No. Nick's just trying to help out. Yeah, good guy Nick. So Sin Collector has... Another path to exile, uh, <laughs> terminus, uh, snapcaster mage, and a cryptic command. Can't take the snapcaster mage, but has his choice between path cryptic and opt. I would take path. I think taking path is the best choice. Yeah, and I think Noah agrees. Path is gone. Yeah. He's still one man away from Cryptic. He's three man away from hardcasting Terminus. Uh, didn't even draw the uh, fourth land yet. Does that have that Snapcaster, though, so he can snap path if he really wants to? The old turn three or four Aether Vial. <laughs> it's never, never where you want it to be, but he still gets it out. Still can make... Pretty much creature spells uncounterable with it. Text for three with Exalted. Nick says, yeah, sure, I'll take it. Oh, boy. 
Okay, now he has the cryptic command. I'm pretty sure he was gonna. Oh, yeah, he was gonna choose the uh, sync collector, but Nick Kaiser says that doesn't sound like good logic to me. Not logical. That's what you said. Logic not. Nah. <laughs> so Noah now with his fifth land drop. The two of them are from paths, but yeah, you know. Now he has that creature in hand again, which I have zero idea what it is. I think it, you know, I think it is a Mayor Averbrook, and I think it's a promo. So I'm gonna look that one up again. See if we can match it to get out of here on my phone. Yep, that's. I gotta go back. I think it is. Yeah. Okay, yes, it yes. is a promo. Yep. So I was right, just the wrong art. What does it say where that one's from? It says it is from. Pre release. Oh, it's pre release promo. Okay, okay, alright. Huh. Seeing the tech. It's tax for five or four, rather. I think this is where I, I guess you have to snapcaster that path. Just thinking about it. Oh, he's gonna opt, hoping to draw a, uh, hoping to draw a terminus. Now it's not a terminus because he would have flipped it quickly, but he does want it. And he's just gonna chump walk there. Must I'm guessing that it was a Jace on top. That's gonna be my guess. Okay. Nope. That was a land. I guess land works too, because now he can just hard cast the uh, the terminus in nice hand. Man. And that's what he does. And restart. And restart, <laughs> yep. I think Noah only has one card in hand, so And it's uh the mayor. Nope, it's not the mayor. No, the mayor I think got countered. Yeah, I got cryptic commanded. <laughs> Noah, uh oh, Noah has the opposite problem than the last game. He's now he's getting too much mana. Nope, and the there's fairy. the Teferi, half a Tron assembled. You might be thinking about tucking the uh, Aether Vial. I think, yeah, I was going to say, I think his best bet, though, is just draw a card. Please land for the turn, untap land. I'll go to his untap phase. I know Miller with the uh, trick of, I'm going to tap my Aether Vial and do nothing. Please and Noble says go. Nick with the land drop, draw a card. Oh, no, he's going to bounce the Aether Vial now. All right. It doesn't bounce. It puts it third from the top. It's such an awkward, it awkward is, it is <laughs> thing to do. Very, very awkward. Scrape with is really good with Field of Ruin. Field of Ruin uh, search effect is not a May ability like Path to Exile is. So you have to shuffle. So right. So if a problematic permanent, you can exile it or uh, put it you know, put a third from the top, but then shuffle their library. You don't have to count down the when it's coming back. Huh. Nick flipping his search to exile or a uh, search for search for his Kanta. Search for exile. Like that it. was the third Tron piece. Was search for was search for exile. Search to exile. No, uh, search for Escanta. He didn't have it the first couple first couple games, though. He didn't need a game two. Now he is gonna activate it. I'm gonna search up a uh, Jace. Now he begins. He. <laughs> Has Tron. <laughs> <laughs> and it begins. And, and he's already doing the plus. Uh, he's thinking about it. And he says it's good. It's so hard getting around that. It's so hard. The. Jace to fairy. Jace to. Yeah. Ugh. 
Jace to Fairy as Kanta combo. It, it even if you can, it takes forever. <laughs> <laughs> Noah plays a well, tries to play a Thalia and gets the Kaiser snare. gets spell plays spell scenario. Yeah. So is Nick gonna brainstorm or is he gonna fate seal? He's gonna draw a card first. Yep, he's gonna use the brainstorm ability. It's pretty great. I think he has a fetch land in hand, so if he wants to, he can just uh, shuffle away those cards. I think one of them we put on top is a Terminus, too, so... He might... Wait, if his opponent plays a creature, he might... <laughs> he might just uh, shuffle it away. No, he just draws it. Okay. Oh, Attention, Attention sphere, sphere on the... <laughs> oh, this just has not been good, going any good for, for Noah. Definitely is a good matchup for blue white like i said once you get to well once you get to now it's obviously over but yeah you know it was over a few turns ago once he cleared the board yeah definitely it's so hard for aggro decks to restart right that's always when i play a counter deck i usually keep some creatures in hand just just in case they have to all out caper to get rid of stuff out in the field well, you sure, have a backup plan yeah yeah, a lot of times that's we. I mean, it's so hard to do because you're just letting your control that control player just keep a massing amount of cards. But sometimes you want to keep two, three, four creatures in hand mm -hmm. and then just try to play them all at the same time, hoping something sticks. Usually doesn't work, but sometimes it does. I'm gonna draw a card. I'll draw three cards, put two cards back. I'll look for a card with uh, Escanta. No, I'm just gonna see what you got. Uh... Yeah, I think I can counter that. <laughs> uh, Since it's my top, that's all I think of every oh, time geez. I see this. Oh. I was just waiting this, that card is banned. Counterbalance. I believe Noah drew a... Uh, the card on top was, uh, was the uh, image. Oh, the fan phantasmal image, yes. Yeah, so you can't even cast it on an empty board. Though I guess he could... But it's a zero zero and would just die and be kind of silly. Draws a cryptic command. Draws a terminus. Uh, yeah, I can counter that one. I think Nick has to discard. Oh no, he can play his land for the turn. Okay. draws a card, Nick draws a card. Nick sees if he wants his opponent to draw a card. Yeah, he'll <laughs> let his opponent draw that card. I think it was a land anyway, so... Plays a land, discards a land, says go. Noah draws a land, Eight, says go. 10, 14. Nick's got to have almost all his lands out. <laughs> They're pretty close. <laughs> well, he just ultimated to fairy, so whenever he draws a card, he's going to start exiling. Oh. So, to fairy's emblem says whenever you draw a card, exile a permanent. Jace's brainstorm ability says draw three, draw three card cards. And puts you back out. Yeah. So now, <laughs> so, so, so now he's going to use Jace's brainstorm ability to exile also exile cards. a bunch of lands. Oh, he's going to play a second Jace and brainstorm. Explain three more lands. <laughs> He's asking if I still have two lands. And Nick is saying... <laughs> opt. <laughs> he did have an opt in hand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there we go. Play opt. <laughs> That's good to say. Scry one. Yeah, I don't want that one. I'm going to draw a card. I'll exile your land. Snapcaster opt. Okay, now he has zero permanence. Was that a... I don't even know what that was. I don't either. I think that was a... Uh, dismember. So he killed... So Noah got him by... Uh, killing his Snapcaster Mage. <laughs> Plays Horizon Pan Canopy says go. Draw... 
Nick draws a card. <laughs> exiles a permanent. Says go. Noah. Well, this game's over anyways. But Noah's trying. Nick's going to attack for eight in the air. <laughs> Noah's going to try to copy it, but has no lands in play. Nope. Oh, oh. Draws a land. Gets says land. go. Uh, Nick is going to go untap, upkeep, draw phase. Okay. And scoop. <laughs> All right, good games. <laughs> All right, so um, <laughs> Nick Kaiser uh, gets it uh, at three, I guess, kind of. I mean, he won all three games. Yes. yes he did. <laughs> Again, that last one was just for fun, but still. I just think I said watch Benjamin Button. So the game started from, you know, really good and just reversed age. <laughs> reversed, reversed into nothingness. <laughs> that that's a good comparison, I think. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Jason to fairy. Let's search for Ganta. <laughs> is Ganta the sunken ruin? Uh, so, yeah, we'll be back for round number three here at. Where are we? Here's welcome. welcome. In Menominee, Wisconsin. Yes. This is the pizza round, by the way. I didn't mention it before, but I can smell the pizza. So if you ever want to play in an F and M, and get this some is pizza. the place. You get pizza. You get soda. You get promo cards, you get fun, you get featured on camera, you get, get two friends. idiots sitting here not knowing what any of your cards do. It's a good time. True. That is the <laughs> truest of the facts. That is the truest of the facts. So, uh, yeah, we'll see you again around number three.
All right, welcome back. And round number three, heroes welcome. Friday Night Magic Modern. We have Ethan Sillers playing Burn. Kyle Faulkner, excuse me, I'm sorry. Kyle Falk, Faulkney. <sighs> Gary, why didn't this pop up? That was weird. Yeah. Okay. Huh. He spelled it right. <laughs> oh, yeah, he spelled it right. It just didn't pop up right. So uh, Kyle Faulkner, Faulkner, <laughs> young Kyle playing Bridgevine. There we go. Um. Yeah. Black red. So he's been playing this for a good good while now. And, uh, Ethan. Uh. Well, Eth Ethan plays kind of whatever decks uh, he just borrows from usually myself or Bob. Uh, then Kyle, Kyle's been playing Bridge Fine for quite a while. That uh, should be a good matchup, though. Both decks are kind of, just kind of, as I always say, two ships sailing in the night. Kind of, whoever's faster is going to win. Mm -hmm. The race. Pretty much. The amazing race. It is quite an amazing race. So Ethan, though, has the turn to Eidolon of Rhetoric. Which is a pretty good card, though. Kyle has a turn to uh, uh, Vengevine. <laughs> so, yeah, again, it's just Ethan wants to just get as much burn as he can. I don't think he wants the creatures in this matchup. He wants more of the burn side. Because, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this is just going to get chumped by the Stitcher Supplier. Putting three more cards into Kyle's graveyard. Ethan is deep in the tank for something. I guess he was seen thinking if you wanted to play a spell to give the uh, Taylor Swift spear. What? Swift Spear. Oh, Swift Spear. Okay. Uh, people call it Taylor Swift Spear, and I just did right there for some reason. Uh, he was pr probably thinking if he wanted to play a spell to give it uh, the prowess. Instead, he just plays a second Eidolon of Rhetoric. Very dangerous spot. To each spell right now, any player plays that converted mana costs two or less will now cost, well now they'll take four damage, that mm -hmm. player will. Uh, Kyle attacks those two creatures that can't block anyways. Uh, Ethan takes it, takes the floor. Kyle's going to flash back a Faithful Saluting. It's pretty good for Ethan right now. He's, gonna, he's got a pretty good board. wonder if Ethan missed the trigger for the uh, Eidolons. Because it should, they would still trigger with, uh, with the Faithful Salutings. I'm not sure if I saw some change life total or not. Eidolon? E-I. D. That is not an Eidolon rhetoric. I'm sorry because I'm dumb, but it is, <laughs> it is an Eidolon. Of the Great Revel. Holy smokes, I'm bad. And because of that, Gary... We show the card. We show the card. <laughs> but I believe Kyle took that one. Yep. And uh, took that the first game. Well, we weren't paying attention. Trying to figure out which idol it was. Because I don't know if you guys know me yet, but I say Nate Card's name wrong if I even say the right card name. Which would still be wrong. But if you guys know what the card name is. You know what they do. I know what they do. That's all that matters. <laughs> Looks like Kyle's putting in some fatal pushes. Makes sense with the every creature in Ethan's deck is I never realized how good one or two uh, converted mana cost. Which one? Fatal push? Yeah. It is a very, very good card. Yes. Yes, it is. So, Bridgevine, do you think he plays Creeping Chill? I don't think so. He has some 
like the stitcher supplier for to oh, mill cards, but he doesn't really mill cards that often. Mill his own cards. I yeah. guess it is a mill card. It's not yeah. Or, yeah. Right. It's not like it's not if he discarded. It would be really yeah really good if it was whenever it was discarded, and did it for free. Holy smokes. So Kyle's mostly on the like faithless looting and st- like I said, Stitcher Supplier does some milling, but it's not as much as the dredge. Yeah. Dredge does. Yeah. Exactly. Ooh, that's... See, when you're talking about how many lands you want to start with, Ethan has is playing the burn deck, and I think I saw four lands. That is not where you want to be in the burn deck. See, I always keep a land... I, I think I keep a hand with three lands in a burn deck. Just just in case. Oh, burn... Two? I think two really? for burn, two. yeah. Interesting. They, it's Burn is basically a glorified combo deck. Yep. In a way... You just want to burn your opponent for 20 damage, and your lands don't burn your opponent. Your creatures do, your spells do. The more lands you draw and the more lands you have in hand is the worst for burn. I heard it best described that if burn could always just start the game with two lands and never draw any more lands for the rest of the game, it would be the best deck in modern. <laughs> it's fair. But I think Ethan's going down to five. Oh, man. Kyle's keeping seven. Four. Land. Well, he did draw the land on the fifth card, and he's going to keep. It was the land, too, I think. Yeah. For sure. Look at that one. Well, Kyle's going first, so that must mean that Ethan must have won that last game. I might have been wrong when we were trying to look up cards. I'm going to switch that around. Then if I'm wrong, I apologize. You can leave a comment saying how wrong <laughs> I was. And I might leave a comment apologizing. But I probably won't. But I still apologize anyways. So Kyle plays uh, turn two Stitcher Supplier, followed by a land. He's going to shock himself, which is not really what you want to do against Burn. However, Ethan going down to five is really good for Kyle. Mulligan down to five cards, that is. Mm -hmm. All right, he plays the Grave Crawler. <laughs> Played, oh, the, oh, there's two creatures. Plays, uh, oh. And Ethan's just going to bolt one of the Venge Vines, which it's already bad news for him if he has to bolt the Venge Vine. Though he has, rest in peace. All right. If he has a second bolt or another way to get rid of that Venge Vine, Ethan might be able to crawl his way out of this, but it's still an uphill battle for him, I think. Because Kyle still has, what, four, six, seven power worth on the pa on the, on the battlefield? Yeah, there's one of ones. Yep. It's a seven. Great Crawler is actually a two one. That card always. It, that card's so good. That's why they played in this deck. Oh, He's just gonna guess, hard yeah. cast a blood cast? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Anger the gods. Yeah. <laughs> so nine power on board. Ethan's at seven. Kyle's going to suspend the uh, greater Gargadon. Ooh, Ooh lightning he helix. Yeah, he's going to lightning helix the Venge Vine. I think Kyle should have, or uh, Ethan should have Lightning Helix the Vengevine during, or like, in response to the uh, Suspend Trigger. Because now he sacrificed, su sacrificed it to the Vengevine, so Ethan actually did not even gain the three life off of Lightning Helix. Oh, I gotcha. Okay, yeah, now they're... Yeah, game three. <laughs> game three. Yeah, I guess Ethan won round game one. That was my mistake. So now, yep, they're on game three now. Ethan quickly sideboarding two cards out. 
He's on the draw. It makes me. I'm wondering if he uh, is. You know, rest in peace is really good, but uh, I wonder if he still wants to keep him in, or if he just wants to try to be the faster beatdown deck. I think I would keep him in myself. But he's on the draw this time, so the earliest he can play it is like turn. Well, his turn two, which would be Kyle's turn three, which a lot of times, even you saw right there where he played a turn two, damage is already done by turn two. Yeah. We'll see, we'll see. I just feel like Burn has such a hard time keeping up with this deck. It, I think the Bridgevine deck is a little bit faster, and, you know, when you have to... When Burn has to start pointing their burn spells at the creatures, mm -hmm. that it's usually a bad sign for Burn. <clears throat> you know, most or all their burn spells wants to go up to the player. He did keep in the rest in peace. Mm -hmm. Though, well, he did. No, that was the Lightning Helix. I believe he has zero lands. We might have. Okay, he does have a land. I should stop commenting on that. <laughs> so you're going to play a Suspended Rift Bolt. Say go. And shock himself into a. Oh, that's the. Uh, oh, that's Faithful Suiting. All right. Discarding a Venge Vine and a Venge Vine. Oh. Ethan wants to draw a land this turn. Ethan's on the play. What is wrong with me? So Ethan was on the play. He drew, drew the land. He's going to play the rest in peace. Yes! Kyle lose all three graveyard important cards in his library. <laughs> just, just we just turn outside these makes the rest of his hand not good at all. <laughs> Suspend a greater <laughs> Gargadon. I'm gonna fetch. Ooh, classic swamp. And this is a unglued swamp. I like that art. I like that kind of. You, you like the border? Yes. Also like the art. Oh, that's fair. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it is pretty good art. Place Stitcher Supplier. Milling a bridge from below. <laughs> oh, <Hey>. two bridges. <laughs> and a blood ghast. Oh man. This uh, rest in peace. I guess I was wrong about yeah. You know the rest in peace. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. <clears throat> Plays a goblin guide. No blocks. I think he repealed a nat revealed a nature's claim. No spike. So. All right. He has the nature's claim. If he has the nature's claim, he can get his grief. Doesn't get his graveyard back, but gets access to his graveyard again. Oh, there we go. Recipe's gone. But is too much damage, or the damage might have already been dealt with getting rid of getting rid of all those cards too off that first sister uh, Stitcher supplier trigger. Mm -hmm. Two Venge vines. Yeah. Two bridges below. Two. Yeah. Oh, still hit a bridge uh, and another blood gas, so <laughs> putting Ethan up to 22. All right. Play a, nope, that's the uh, Insolent Neonade. I, I told you about this last week, Gary. It's the one where you can you discard a card, sacrifice, and draw a card. Oh, yep, yep. So he discards the fourth bridge from below. He would have had all four this game if it wasn't for that rest in peace. That's crazy. <laughs> is he going to bolt Yo, his own yeah, creature in response? <laughs> Ethan uh... knows how this works. Ethan knows how he knows how to play this game. Putting Ethan up to 25. Guess they were seeing if he would still get zombies, and the answer is nope. You don't get any zombies. Ethan. 
So he doesn't have to worry about Bridge from the Low for the rest of the game. Now he's just got to worry about the little creatures that will keep coming back. Pretty much, yeah. There's only two uh, Venge Mines left in the deck, so, you know, as long as Kyle doesn't hit any of those and Ethan just keeps drawing burn spells. Mm hmm. Well, Ethan only has two cards in hand with Kyle at 12. He, I think Kyle's at 9 because he just played a Lava Spike. Okay. I don't think Kyle moved that. Oh, he, okay. Yeah. Yep. He sh showed his hand, Kyle's. Okay. Well. Yeah, that yeah. was a rough. That was rough. That was very rough. That rest in peace. Man, did all the work that game. And I definitely stand corrected that Burn is not <laughs> not his best. Well, I think that rest in peace is definitely the game changer there. Yeah, that rest in peace. Uh, <laughs> I usually don't like rest in peace and burn because it's not a burn card. But I, I mean, play that defense, man. Defense is the best offense. It, it, well, <laughs> it worked right there. It worked right there. So, you know, people who are better at building decks than I <laughs> are smarter than I. Did the right call of putting rest in peace. Rest in peace. That that game, it that it pretty much won him the game. Was that yes. rest in peace? Even yes. the even when he was able to destroy it, it still did. It's, it did a damage. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that was pretty quick. We'll see if we can get another round, another game in, another match in. Let's see if we can do something. If not, yep. we'll meet you. We'll <laughs> see you again in round number four. So uh, we'll see you then.
All right, welcome back. Oh, the camera's messed up on Nick Kaiser's side. Uh, welcome back to round number four of Heroes Welcome in Anomaly, Wisconsin. Uh, I'm Brent, as you know. Gary is left. I'm actually here with uh, Bob. I bombed out of the rounds, so I decided yeah. I would come join you fine people. Um, let's. See. We're going to see if we get that yep. camera fixed. Uh, hold on a second. Yeah, we'll get that camera fixed for you guys and... Uh, so it looks like they're both taking a mulligan. Down to six. And Nick again playing the blue eye control. Gary's decided he doesn't like blue eye control and didn't even want to watch this one. I love watching control. I do too. I'm interested, I mean, against Connor's company though, it's going to kind of be... I was kinda... If he has the path and the right counter spells at the right time. Right. And it's kind of what I was saying when we played against uh, humans before and I was telling Gary that... It's pretty much, Counter's Company has got to, <laughs> hello, uh, Counter's Company has got to get off right out of the gate really fast, otherwise if we get to the middle late game, uh, Nick's just got it under control. Yep. Looks like Ariel is, uh. Now we can all get down to five. Now we can see Nick's beautiful face. Yes, very handsome young. I think our I think man. our viewership just went up tenfold. Yep, we got two viewers instead of one. <laughs> that would be would be that'd be one fold. Oh. That'd be one fold. I guess it would be one fold, two fold. It depends what the value of one is. I I don't know. <laughs> so maybe we did get ten viewers. That'd be easier. Um, I'm looking forward though in the downtime here. I'm looking forward to some standard tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, That's it's going to be, be bad. It's gonna yeah. be, I mean, we're probably not going to know a lot of the cards, but I'm excited to watch it. Yeah. Bob and I are both going to be commentating tomorrow, and neither of us really have watched Standard in a while. And this is also a new Standard format, so uh, if you're going to be watching, just bear with us. I've been, tr I've been trying to absorb as much as I can. Yeah. But there isn't a lot. I mean, the format's a week old. Right, exactly. Just pretty much going so, on MTG Goldfish, where uh, yeah, the top decks I, are, and uh, hoping for the best. It's like Ariel kept on five. What is that? Is that a red card in his hand? Is that a Magus that of the Moon? That is a Magus of the Moon? Wow. Main deck. Okay, well, all right. That is an interesting, interesting card. I don't know if I agree with that, but, I mean, I agree that it's I interesting. I guess you can collect a company into it, but can he cast it, actually? Uh, I mean, he probably, probably has... play any stomping ground? Yeah. But the right now... you play your stomping ground, and you shut off your own stomping ground. Right. I'm not sure. I mean, I'm all for trying new cards. I'm excited to see it. Yeah. He's even a cast, although right now it's not even that good for him. No, no. Especially since Nick has already has a basic island out. But, I mean, blue-white plays, what, nine basics? At maybe, least. Maybe ten? Yeah. And they play a lot of basics, and you just see Drew basic planes. Yeah. And that shuts him off of like specific cryptic command hands right. early on, but I'm surprised he's not playing anything here. I I think he has a uh, he has a scavenging move. It doesn't oh, have go. a scavenging, but he had yeah, a so, yeah a collected company in hand. So now he's putting Nick on. He can't cast a logic knot. So right. He's putting on mana leak. So a lot of these decks I noticed don't even play mana leak anymore. I do know. I did see Nick did play at least one. Okay. I say they play one to zero copies. Right, yeah. So they usually like don't play that many. Eternal Witness and a Kitchen Finx. Not bad. There's nothing better than he collected company into an Eternal Witness. Yeah, bringing back the collected company to hand. Or the good old days of Kiki Cord when the end step you would cord for your Eternal Witness, <laughs> get back the cord. Yep. Oh. Just go on the deep. <laughs> so <laughs> good. <laughs> Beat down plan. Yes. <laughs> well, because then you've upped your cord, so on the next turn you can cord for four. So oh, then I you suppose, go get a Restoration yeah. Angel. Bound you then to blink. blink the. Eternal Witness. And then the next one you can court for five and go get Kiki Jiki and you win. Oh man, yep, yeah, that's right. You're absolutely right. I mean, if your opponent doesn't have counter spells or removal mm, or you know any sort of interaction, lightning bolt, but shock. Yeah, the fact that at six mana you can win the game with a court calling in three turns, <laughs> <laughs> and that's kind of why that deck has fallen out of favor. I'm sad. I'm so sad. That wasn't that like one of your favorite decks. It was. Uh, I made ninth at regionals. You were there the whole night. Yeah, I sure was. How many rounds did you sit through? Well, at least 30. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of rounds. It was a lot. I wanted to lose at that point. So, Well, I wanted you to win at that point because <laughs> getting ninth is worse than... Oh, don't tell, you don't have to tell me that. Okay. 
The Ariel tried to play that uh, collector company again, yeah, but it got yeah, cryptic. Uh, cryptic this time. Yeah. Yeah. The beautiful uh, evocation. Evocation cryptic. He doesn't know Ketra on it. I'm sure. What the white god? Oh. Sure. Scavenging <laughs> ooze. There's the card I was wondering. That's really good against the Snapcasters. Yeah, as long as he keeps at least a green up, the Snapcasters can never really do anything. So I haven't been with you guys tonight. Yeah. Have you seen any new, any Return of Ravnica cards? No, not this time. Uh, that's why. That's what I was excited about for my deck. I had some Return of Ravnica cards in it. Yeah, I really wish I saw what you I had, had in there. It was pretty. Ego. It was his Unmoored Ego in his red-blue wizard deck. Yeah, I was splashing a Blood Crypt and a Watery Grave. And one main deck, Unmoored Ego, and two more on the sideboard. Uh, basically because the wizard deck really didn't have any way to get cards out of the graveyard. Sure. And that's the nice part of Unmoored Ego. It actually can take from the graveyard as well. As long as you just have to name a card. Yep. So it was kind of running as a, you know, surgical, or as, a, as a, I guess, surgical extraction, cranial extraction kind of thing. Sure. That was my thought process. <laughs> I don't know how good it was, but. Ah, it threw me off when you showed it to me. <laughs> I didn't realize. I was like, in your not in black deck. All right. Ooh, so Spell Snare on the uh, Devoted Druid. Ooh, hard cast Just terminus. Hard cast terminus, huh? That's some would say the worst way to cast terminus. You know what though? It got rid of some creatures. What if, I guess snapcaster terminus would feel a bit worse. <laughs> yes, it would. But if you have the eight mana dude and you're not dead, yeah, I yeah. think that's if you're, you're probably winning the game anyway. Exactly. So. Ooh, another eternal witness. All the ewits. I mean, he's got the collect companies though. That's how he's going to rebuild this game. Absolutely. Unlike the human deck that doesn't really have a way to come back yep. from a terminus like that. And they have the buglers, but it's not yeah. as good as a collective company. No, yeah, collective company is just a lot better way just to refuel the, I guess, refuel the battlefield. Eternal Witness, one of my favorite magic cards. One of my first competitive decks I ever played. Uh, I think I told Gary this story, I don't know if I told you it. Uh, I pulled one cranial extraction. When Kamigawa came out, that was the hot <laughs> card. It was like $20. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to buy more Cranial Extractions. So I played a green-black deck with four Eternal Witnesses. So you could bring back So if I hit my one Cranial Extraction, <laughs> I could play Eternal Witness and get it back and do it again. Man, that's like a combo. It was. I also played Script Sprites in that deck. Oh, boy. I have no idea what that does. Script Sprites is a one-green, one-one flyer. Okay. Yep, that's Is that it. it? <laughs> <laughs> but hey, that was a premium back then. That Flying was, men, like, one blue for a one one flyer. Yeah, that was a five six dollar card. Yeah, five six dollar common. And at now the time, you yeah. have a one mana, one blue flyer that counters a spell. Yeah, sacrifice a counter spell. Yeah. Yep. I mean, Savannah Lions used to be one of the best creatures because it was one mana two one. Two one, yeah. Now there's uncommon, even commons that are commons like, that are just one mana two ones. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Savannah Lions is now a common. Yeah. That tells you about, I mean, the power of the cards. Yeah, definitely. Uh, as magic's been going on, the like, spells have gotten a bit worse. Instant well, sorcery, but gotten creatures so have better. gotten a hundred times better. Well, yeah, you're never going to see another Ancestral Recall. No, 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 no. I was telling Gary this uh, the other day. I think it was Gary. Uh, about the, the five threes when magic was printed. Oh, yeah. The one the, for threes. Yep. Um, so you had your... Ancestral Recall, one blue draw, one three, blue cards. three cards. Lightning Bolt, one red deal, three damage. Uh, giant Growth. Giant Growth being your one green, plus three, plus three. Dark Ritual. One, one black, black, add three black. Yep. And then Healing Salve. Healing Salve, the white one. Uh, one white, Obviously, three power life. level, not <laughs> as good. But, I mean, if you're thinking about it from a design spec uh, point, you're thinking, all right, what does this color do? Blue draws cards, counter spells green, you know, you're trying to pump your big creatures. Right. Um, makes sense. Obviously, years down the road, you realize how powerful card advantage is. Yes. Well, even like the mana advantage with uh, Dark Ritual, yep. they kind of realize that black shouldn't be really doing that. Yep. Um, they are very careful with their rituals. Yeah. Now. So I believe Ariel uh, just comboed off there, by by the way. I saw that. So, looked like Nick had it until... Uh, we said those collected companies. Yeah, until yeah, he, he was just... holding the viziers in his hand. Yeah, I saw he had a couple of viziers. 
and uh, yeah, I was able to just. Uh, now, Travis and I were talking about the this uh, card company deck. Uh, there's at least three players who play here that play this deck. Oh wow! So if you're coming here, you gotta be prepared to fight this deck. Yeah, and it's tough to fight because it hits you on so many axes. The Counters Company is not really a popular deck in like mid or big tournaments. Like you don't really see mm -hmm. it on SCG or. It is very fragile. Yeah, because I mean you're playing a lot of, O you know O twos X ones, um, but yeah, it's definitely it does pretty well here. And it's another one of those decks too that if you're not careful, it could just you, you could just win out of nowhere. Yep. This you could be so far behind, so far behind, so far behind, so far behind. I just won. Yep. You collect the company into the exact perfects at the end of the turn. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Untap and win. Have the third piece in hand and yeah. I think having the uh, Shalai mm -hmm. in the deck helps a lot too. Yeah. Just kind of giving it that other mana mana sink to it too. Mm-hmm. Because you can actually cord for a Shalai with your infinite mana. Whereas if you you can't cord for your walking walking ballista, ballista yeah. Though you can just cord for uh, for the guy that looks oh, yeah. top three card. But, but, but I know what you mean though. I'm all about efficiency, yes. less movement. Yep, just a lot more uh, dice. Yes. So what happened uh, last round? Did Ethan win? Ethan, so Ethan, uh, yeah, he uh, he played a turn to rest in peace against the Bridgevine deck. Ah. And uh, if turn, so Ethan was on the play, turn one, uh, Kyle discarded two... Um, Bridge from below? No, he discarded two uh, Bridgevines. Okay. So then, yeah, his turn two, he played uh, rest, rest in peace. <laughs> And then Kyle played a, um, he played a Stitcher Supplier and exiled two bridges and a Bloodgast. <laughs> he did draw Nature's Claim a couple turns later, but it was already, the damage had already been done. Yeah. That would have been a really good hand uh, without that rest in peace. Though so during that same game, Kyle was able to get the other two bridges from below in the graveyard, and he sacked his Insolent Neonade. And in response, uh, Ethan Lightning Helix to his own Goblin Guide. I like it. And, uh, yeah. That's the guy who knows how to play against Bridge from Blood. Yes, yeah, that's exactly what I said, too. He's like, he knows how this you works. You kill your own creatures as fast as you can. Yep. Uh, but that's it's a card that not many people are familiar, were, were familiar with Yeah. prior to the deck becoming popular. I believe the deck's lost a little bit of steam. Like, the price tag's gone down a tad on mm -hmm. it. Um, it's not as popular as... Uh, it once was a lot. A lot of these, when more graveyard cards come around, then people start bringing more graveyard yep. hate. And so then you got to play decks that don't play uh, around the graveyard. As Dredge much. is really popular right now with that new uh, creeping chill. I creeping think it's chill, yeah. I know you guys saw it last week. Uh, I was watching at home and was trying to figure out what that card was as well. But yeah, definitely creeping chill in that deck seems really good. It, a free lightning helix. I wonder what they cut for it though. I was curious about that too. I'm not exactly sure. I mean, I, do you just shave cards? I don't think you can cut a four of. No, I don't think you cut a four of. It might be just shaving cards. Shave maybe like a conflagrate. Um, maybe like an insolent neonate. Maybe a cathartic reunion. Yeah, something like that. Um, to say you don't want to shave any of your creatures or your dredgers. I don't know. I'd be interested to see a list. Yeah. Like in comparison. Good thing the internet exists. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? So Ariel's having a rough time with the mulligan, but he did go to five. He go to five and still comboed out, yeah. So it's he had that Magus of the Moon in his hand the entire, the entire I know, game. I noticed that he, mul or he uh, sideboarded that card out. Seems correct. <laughs> uh, they... Tireless Tracker. I... Very good in the control. Yes. Very good if you're going to go long. He does not get tired if a game goes long. No, he, he tracks his he tracks it way very well. around. Oh, are we going to have a turn three here? Well, Nick doesn't have the counter or the Vizier the in path. his hand. Oh, boy. He does have the path. All right. Or that Oust. was an oust. All right, all right. Yeah. 
I think he had him here, actually, if it would have been had that else. That's a bad. So he had another one on top, and then he has another one underneath it. Oh. I think he has the Vizier. There's no, it's just Shalai. That's the white card. Oh, okay. There's a Coco, an Eternal Witness. Oh, two Cocos. Now the, now path, the path. Yep. Gets rid of the one and shuffles the other one and somewhere seems, in the. Seems good. Yeah. You know what I'm excited to see tomorrow, though? I hope we see a lot of Teferis. You're hoping for a lot of blue white X control? I think there'll be. I think Jeskai. I think there'll be some Esper. Um, I mostly because I, I feel like a lot of the players around here are modern players that are going to be playing, and they already have their Teferis. Right. Um, so that's an expensive card out of the way. Though I noticed a lot of the lists, they run four Teferis. Yep. Almost modern decks only run two, two Teferi, yep. so even still, you have to pay another 50 bucks to get your full set. I was surprised at History of Banalia. Yeah. That card's about $25 right it's, now. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. It, it doesn't look that good on paper, but I it's... I feel like that was like a $5 card. I, I think it was. <laughs> but, I mean, it's really good in your like mid-range shell. Yeah. Um, I saw tokens, pl or Grixis, definitely green-white tokens. Grixis I'm excited it. to watch, hopefully tomorrow. Um, I definitely think we'll have some brews. Oh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I hope you guys hang out with us tomorrow. Uh, we're looking forward to it. We may not be very good, not as versed with it, but yeah, um, we will definitely do our best to provide you some excellent Magic the Gathering, and John will do his best to provide an excellent event, as always. Yes. Um, so, yeah, if you guys are thinking about coming down, even if you don't want to play, if you just want to come watch, uh, you want to hang out with us on the stream, there also is a Walking Dead Day uh, tomorrow. Oh, yeah. That uh, John was talking to Brent about. They're going to have a couple free comics, some other free stuff. Um, so you guys can come down and check that out. Or if, you just wanna, if you're in the area and you just want to check out the shop and hang out, get yourself some boosters to build your standard deck. Let's get some Guilds of Ravnica boosters. Yeah. Or finish off that uh, modern deck you've been working on. Get your Risk Factors and your Assassin's Trophies. That card has not been as popular as I would... Uh, Assassin's Trophy? Yeah. I have not... At least uh, around here, I have not. I don't think I've seen I, a single copy even yet. On, even online, um, everyone was so scared of that card. Um, people were talking about building their decks around that card, and I don't know that it's gone that big. Like I don't think I haven't seen Jun numbers skyrocketing. Nope, I haven't really seen Jun. I haven't seen it really much Abzan. I haven't seen yeah. much. So is that black green? A surgical? No path. Okay. Was, yeah, path to exile. Okay. Snapcaster path. Yep. Yeah. No, I uh, obviously obviously we're a week into it, so I mean the and there really hasn't been a big modern tournament. Not yet. Um, there, there was the big Star City team event, yeah. but it's so hard to judge a modern deck or even a standard event by that because your standard. I I didn't well, actually watch the finals yet, but your standard deck could be the worst standard deck, and if your two team other teams are winning, yep. that doesn't even really well, matter. That's, that's why people were trying to judge the the beta. And it's hard to judge that Celestia Tokens is the best deck. Because, yeah, it could have had a... They played 15 rounds. <coughs> that that could have went, you know, 6 and 9. Right. And their other ones went 12 and 3. Right. Yeah, you exactly. Yeah, it's so hard to judge a, 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 any yep. anything, any format on a same with, same with Modern. Like, if you played Modern Unified, you can't really take the judge... Because you play different decks. Right. Based on that. Um, I don't know if there's an SCG Open this weekend... I don't know. I don't think there is. I was sad to see their new schedule. I don't know. Why? I'm excited the players oh, because ship is back, but their closest event to here is in Ohio. Yeah, we're we're in the uh, middle of Wisconsin. Well, uh, which is funny because Western Minnesota Wisconsin. is a huge area for magic. Now I was talking to a buddy about that, and pretty much he said it's true that they can't really get judges over here. Mm -hmm. You know, they have their judges over in those areas that will, are willing to drive and stuff like that. But when they come over here, they're not getting the judge. They're getting the people, but they can't get the judges. And they're getting also, so low staff the, on that. the money that costs to rent the venues right. is a lot more expensive. Right, here. right, yeah. Yeah, it's a shame that there's no Star City events nearby. But that's okay, because now we can play uh, Heroes Welcome events. Mm -hmm. In Menominee, Wisconsin. USA. Earth. Earth 
Is that like a movie title? Sounds like, it's movie. like a video game. Oh, okay. Earth 2033 AD. BC. I think he still has a Shalai in his hand. Well, Nick's been uh, keeping mana up almost every turn. So. Ariel, very good at the kind of attrition plan. Here. Yeah. I mean, obviously, a Snapcaster versus a Pride Mage. The Pride Mage is going to win. Yes. I like the Pride Mage, too, because it puts him off of any Oblivion Rings. Mm. Obviously, unless he Oblivion Rings the Pride Mage, which then it won't matter anyways. So. Also keeps him off of uh, Search for his Kanta. Ooh, you're correct. All right, here it is. He's got he's got a backup one here, so this seems pretty safe at end step. Yeah, if this is cryptid, he can just uh, play his second one main phase. Or yep. if this one's good, then he's uh, you know he's he's yep, golden. So, there's so yeah, the there's the cryptic. He, and now he keeps up two, so he could and Nick, have a logic. I was say knot. he could have a logic knot, which would not seems be in, likely. Yeah, would not be in Ariel's favor. Now do you, you fire just, it off? I was just going to ask that. Do you just fire it off I think, now? Or? I think you go for the Shalai. No, no, that seems okay. Oh, I think he counterbounced the... Uh, oh, okay, yep, yep. The seems guy, good. so now, yeah, he's just going to say go. I would have probably jammed the Shalai here, though. I think I saw a gate in Nick's hand. So he would have had that collect the company yep. covered anyways. Ooh, there it is, see? Seen the target be probably the Pride Mage. Probably. Let's it happen. And there's no reason to Oh I agree, but I mean he needs the mana for the collection it's, it's, company it's anyways. A moot yeah. point anyways right. so. And throws for the collect company. Let's see if he has the negate here. And he does. The weird jellyfish looking negate. Yep. Not the full art uh, mushroom looking negate. <laughs> Ewit. Get back, Coco. I believe the only card left in Nick's hand is a Terminus. Not bad, though. Let's see if he draws a counter spell here. I just, yeah. I hope that Ariel doesn't. Collect a company and draw into the combo, and yep, because he has just, the Shalai. Yep, and he can just uh, turn his next a turn. white mana. And yeah, he, he has a cord too. Oh, he does have a cord. Oh, yeah. so he with this Coco could win the game if he hits either piece. Right. Here we go. Unresolves. It looks like. All right. All right. Here we go. Uh, I see a white card. And it does not look like he hit it. If he hits either piece, though. He wins. Uh, kitchen oh, yep, kitchen and, uh, and, and a devoted druid. Devoted druid. So he, I believe he wins here. If he yeah, he fetches. If he just goes for. Uh... No, he's one short. Well, yeah, he can't. He he can only court for one right now. So, so he can just win gonna... on his turn. Right. Yeah, he wins on his turn. If yeah, if he goes for it. Yep. Yeah. Which I don't. I mean, the collect company resolves, so I feel like you are thinking your opponent yeah. is not. Your opponent has resolve. one card in hand. He just let company resolve. It could be a path. Right. But he has a terminus. We all know. Right. So yeah, he's gonna cord for the uh, vizier here. Yep. He has a shalai in his hand. Yeah, and then he can just attack the yeah. lethal with the bird. Or I feel like you just go for it. I mean, the attack's free. Well, no, he doesn't want to attack first. Well, he is. All right. He must be scared of the card in his hand. All right. All right. Passes. Interesting. Because yeah, if he was going for the Shalai win, he'd want to wait to attack because yeah, after the attacks, All right. you know, big guys don't matter. I think he might have missed a chance to win there. But obviously he doesn't know in Nick's hand. Right. Yeah, so there's the term. And that's rough. But, you know, I say, we have perfect information. So. Right. It's Yeah, it's really hard to tell if you... Should just jam into it, or you know, you're just gonna get blown out if he has yep. a path or something like that. End of turn, cord. And cord for three. Do we get the witness? Witness or kitchen finks, I guess. And sin collector. I'm not quite sure what's in his uh, library. Night of Autumn. Hmm. Blow up the sphere. Oh, that would be pretty good. 
a ton of damage next turn, no, but he's just going to be the witness for uh, Collective Company. He yeah, one card in hand. Yeah, if he got the Knight of Autumn, could have blown up, got the guy back, tech, have four power on the board when yep. Nick's at seven. I don't know if he plays the Knight of Autumn. But... I don't see why he wouldn't, but I mean, if he does, I don't know if it would be in his deck right now. Plays the Kitchen Fink, says go. And Nick knows he has the Coco in hand, I'm but good. I don't know if Nick can do anything about it. It is the full timely, so he gets the three creatures and the six life. It's extra timely. Ooh, extra time. and Alira. All right, all right. All right, so we got ourselves a race here. Here's the yep. Coco. I think he still has another cord in his hand. Oh, he has a uh, Pithing Needle guy. Oh, the Frexian Evoker. Yeah, Frexian Evoker. Not really going to do much on this board. No. But he does have that. He has the Shalai. Because he's just waiting to play the Revoker if Nick plays either Teferi or mm -hmm. Jace. You don't want to name one and then get blown up by the other. And he hits a Vizier and a Eternal Witness? Yeah. Must be, okay, yeah, it must be an eternal witness. He just brought back that Coco again. And he knows, well, Nick's empty handed, so. Yeah, but he can't combo him. No. But I think you'd want to just play the Collect Company on his on well, your yeah. turn now. I mean, you force the Terminus. Right. Which gets rid of the Lyra. Very good game. Yeah. The bird's kind of free here. It doesn't really matter. Goes for the Shalai. That's right. They have the same color sleeves. Yes, they do. <laughs> Just hope that Nick doesn't shuffle in that. Uh, the Revoker. Nick doesn't shuffle in the uh, that card underneath the detention sphere. Seems like a bit of an overextension there, playing both, though. Yeah, yeah. If Nick just top decked a uh, thing right there, it would have just been over terminus. I was gonna ghost quarter the Gavany Gavany Township. I was gonna ask, just ask if a Nick attacks for five to gain ten to gain five life, but I think keep it on defense is for the better. Oh now he's attacking. It means he probably drew a counter spell. Yeah. Right, here it is, the Coco. Oh, he has a get second Gavany. Okay, oh, he has second Gavany. I didn't see that. Holy smokes. I guess here, though. So if he... Gavany's here... He can then Gavany again on his turn. I don't know if that's lethal, though. And Nick has three blockers. The Shalai would be a five. Flying, but that's not Bird would be two, 15. that's seven. Yep. So if eight more get through, he can block three. So one, two, three, two. It would be close. I think he's mm. at one or two. Wow. Real close, though. Just passes.
I think with at least two lands in hand. You know, Nick might be able to pull this one back out here. If that one turn he didn't go for it. Yeah. He's a very, very cautious. Yeah. Playing like you. Too cautiously. Did not Gavany at the end of the turn. So I think it was a little. I don't think he has a Gavany in play. I think it was kind of a. Oh, he used little the Shalai. Bit, he used the Shalai. Used the Shalai. That's what it was. Okay. Like I thought he did in response, but didn't like tell him or something, or that just wasn't communicated well. But that's right. The Shalai has the Gavany Township ability mm -hmm. too. So yeah, Ariel now is going to play a play the Devoted Druid. Though it is summoning sick. He does have the combo, but it's summoning six, so... So Nick has a turn. Yes. Because he has all the pieces in, in play. Huh. Oh, well, all right. Nick apparently didn't want to try another turn. Yeah, I missed something there. Well, he played it past, and then Nick just said, yeah, you got it. Oh, okay. Huh, all right. Hmm. Oh, I forgot to switch the yeah, names. Yeah, I'm Gary. You're not Gary. This is, in fact, Bob Rostrum. Bob. I'm Brent Stearns. Robert the Bob. Robert the Bob, Brostrom, Bra, the Stirk. Big Bra, Brostrom, Robert. <laughs> Gary didn't want to join us. So. And he didn't want to watch that blue light control deck, I even though he... I thought it was a really good game. I thought I yeah, thought it was really good. I, really I enjoy, enjoy watching. I, I enjoy watching control decks. I do too. Control mirrors. Control mirrors. Yes. They're horrible to play, but they are a lot of fun to They're watch. They're very bad. Are horrible to play. They are. Is that what I said? I don't know. <laughs> so um, we'll be uh. Hopefully, we do better tomorrow when we are stream commentating the standard. We'll see. Uh, I will not be around for the first round. Uh, could not get off work, so I will be uh, around for probably about round two to get to listen to Brent's melodious voice. Yeah, I'll be uh, doing uh, it solo, and you you know for how, round one. how good I am with card names and stuff um, like that, so it should be a good time. Yeah, we're definitely looking forward to it. Um, hopefully you guys want to hang out tomorrow. Hopefully we can get up to the double-digit viewers That'd be nice. tomorrow. Uh, so if you're watching, uh, if you watch our YouTube, um, go ahead and let people know we're trying to get the number of followers up on the page. Uh, so even if you don't want to watch us, you got a friend who has a Twitch account, just have him throw a like on it for us. We definitely appreciate it. Yeah. Um, obviously, we'd rather have you hang out and watch with us, but uh, if you can't, just you know, see if we can get our name out there. Um, and then, yeah, we'll hope to see you guys next Friday. I'll be in the booth here, uh, not playing. Got it out of my system. Got crushed pretty bad. Got milled out. Um, I lost to the new Risk Factor double damage Flamekin whatever thing is. The one that... Plus, Steam, plus one, plus one counters. Steam Flogger or something. Steam, Steam Flamekin. Yes. Uh, deck seemed really, really good. Yeah. Um, got Modern back red. to back. Bedlam Reveler. Two games in a row. Um, so deck, I think there's definitely something there. Yeah. We're actually having a discussion about if Risk Factor is good enough to go into Boros Burn. I definitely think it is as a two of. The question is, will you cut for it? I, I could see maybe cutting like... Maybe like a... A Boros Charm. I was thinking maybe a, like a, a Rift spot, Bolt. A Rift Bolt, something like that. Um, I can see playing two copies of it. Um, yeah, maybe we'll have to put it together, see if we can get one of our uh, people to play it out there. Um, yeah, we'll see you guys tomorrow. I uh, hope you all have a good night. Thanks for hanging out. Bye-bye.